Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I am now going to be going through question number four from the October 2023 Statistics S1 paper from the International A Level NXL S1 paper. So, this question here is about discrete random variables, and it says the discrete random variable X has the following probability distribution. Okay, so that means um, a discrete random variable is basically the result of an experiment. Um, for example, throwing a coin or, you know, whatever it could be. And the random variables are basically the results, the possible results that could have, could, could uh, be the result of these experiments. So, for example, just imagine this is um, like a, say, a four-sided spinner. Okay, four-sided spinner, okay, which is being um, like, you know, thrown or spin, span around. So, you have one two three four those are the numbers that could appear which could it could fall on for example and it's not um, a fair spinner it's more likely to land on some sides than others because the probabilities of each are different okay so these could be the possible outcomes of this experiment it could land on a one two three or four and these are the probabilities of those outcomes occurring so that's one possible scenario of where this could come from all right they haven't told us what the actual situation is so we don't know what it's about but a random variable or a discrete random variable is a number which is discrete not continuous and it's uh, the result of an experiment you don't know what it's going to be until you have carried out the experiment and um, you know basically those are the possible answers or the possible outcomes of the experiment or it has to be numerical it can't be it can't be like um, a description. You can't say uh, the probability of getting a head or a tail. You can't, you know, a head or tail is not an outcome which is, um, um, you know, a discrete ra random variable. Okay, it has to be a numerical value. It can't be a description. So the number one, two, three, or four are the discrete random variables for this particular experiment. And these are the probabilities of each of those. So we got to show that the expected value of 1 over x equals 2 fifths. Now the expected value of x is found by multiplying the probability of each of the outcomes by the outcome and finding the sum of those products. So here it's not asking for ex, they're asking for e1 over x. So what we're going to do is we're going to find what 1 over x is. So we're going to take these x values and we're going to find the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 1 is 1, the reciprocal of 2 is a half, the reciprocal of 3, so this is 1 over x, the reciprocal of 3 is 1 third, and the reciprocal of 4 is 1 quarter. Because we've made another row, and we call this 1 over x, basically. So to find the expected value of 1 over x, we're going to multiply these by their probabilities, and then add them all together. So the expected value of 1 over x is going to be you're going to have uh, 1 times a tenth. Okay, so I'll just show the working here. Plus, and you're going to have a half times a fifth. Plus, a third times 3 tenths. Plus, a quarter times 2 fifths. Okay, so what does that give us? Let's have a look. Gives us 1 tenth. Plus, 1 tenth again. Plus, one tenth again plus and yes again one tenth again so you have four tenths which is two fifths so the expected value of one over x is equal to two fifths i'll leave it as a fraction as these are given as fractions we could write it as 0 0.4 that would be fine as well but just keeping it to the same format as we have in the question so there's part a and we've shown that it's in fact we should, we were asked to show it's two fifths, so of course we're going to leave it as two fifths because they said show that it's two fifths, and we have managed to show exactly what we are supposed to show. So this, these type of questions sometimes they do have this show that aspect to them because uh, they want to make sure or they want to give you a chance to realize that you're on the right tracks in the way that you're thinking. Because if you didn't get two fifths and you did something else, you could go back and say, okay, I've done something wrong, let me correct it, and then hopefully you would be on the right tracks for the rest of the question. So you won't, um, you know, lose out on the whole question. So that's why a lot of these questions, at the beginning, they say show that, and then you can be quite confident that your 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 train of thought is is correct the way you're thinking about the question. Okay, part B says find the variance of one over x. Now the variance um, is found. The variance of one over x 
is equal to the mean of the squares, which is going to be the expected value of 1 over x, this whole thing squared, 1 over x squared. Okay, so the expected value of 1 over x squared, okay, minus the square of the mean. So what we just found now, which is the expected value of 1 over x, this answer squared. So it's this answer squared here. And here you've got to find the expected value of 1 over x squared. So we've got to basically over here take 1 over x and we've got to square it. Okay, so we've got to take these values here, 1 over x, these values here, and square them. So you can have 1, 1 quarter, 1 ninth, and 1 over 16. Those are 1 over x squared. And we're going to now do the same thing. We're going to find um, the expected value of 1 over x squared, which is going to be these multiplied and add it together. So let's find that first. Let's find the expected value of our 1 over x squared. So it's not the whole thing squared, it's just that part. It's the mean of the squares of 1 over x. So we're going to have a tenth times, we're going to have 1 times a tenth again, plus a quarter times um, 1 fifth. So it's going to be the same as these, um, but just squaring this part. It's going to be 1 over 9 times 3 over 10, plus, and it's going to be 1 over 16 times, 2 over 5. So it's going to be exactly the same as these, except this number is squared. So 1 squared is 1, a quarter squared is, a half squared is a quarter, a third squared is 1 ninth, and a quarter squared is 1 over 16. And these will be the same, those probabilities. 1 tenth, 1 fifth, sorry, 3 tenths and 2 fifths. So now let's see what that gives us. That's 1 over 10 plus 1 over 20 plus, that cancels with that, 1 over 30. Looks like there's a pattern again, plus that cancels with that, goes 8, 5, 8 to 40, 1 over 40. So that gives us, the common denominator is, I think 120 is, is, a, is the lowest common multiple. All right, so we have uh, now 120, 10 times 12 is 120, plus 20 times 6 is 120, plus 30 times 4 is 120, and 40 times 3 is 120. So those are the numerators. So 12 plus 6, 18. Or you can say 6 plus 4, 10. 10 plus uh, 15, 25. So 25 over 120. Okay, 25 over 120. That's the expected value of x. That gives us what? 5 goes into 25 5 times over 5 goes into 120. 2 times remainder 2 to 5 over 24. Okay, so that's the expected value of 1 over x squared okay so now we can say that the variance of 1 over x is going to be equal to this number which is 5 over 24 minus the square of what we found two fifths minus the square of two fifths so you're going to have 5 over 24 minus 4 over 25 i'll just use the calculator with that one so 5 over 24 minus 4 over 25 that gives us 29 over 600 29 over 600 so there there is the variance of 1 over x equals 29 over 600 let me write that a bit neater 29 over 600 so there's the answer to part b and there's the answer to part a okay so there's the answer for this question a and b okay now we're going to go on to part c it says the random variable y equals 30 over x we've got to find the expected value of y and the variance of y okay so now we, we worked out the expected value of 1 over x and we found that that was two fifths right that was two fifths they told us that okay and we worked out the variance of 1 over x. And we worked out that was 29 over 600. Let me just confirm that in case. Yep, okay. So now what we're going to do is use our understanding of the following. Now, if we know that you have um, a transformation of, say, a to the power of x, e a to the power of x plus b. So, you know, not to the power of e a times x plus b. And you know what e you know what e x is the expected value of x is you have some transformation of this like we have here, okay? Um, 
which is like 30. You, you'll see what I mean in a minute. This is going to be the same as A times the expected value of X plus B. They will give you the same answer. So if you know what this is, you can find out what that is. Okay. And if you have the variance of AX plus B, then we learn that if it's variance, because variance is to the square of the numbers, you take A squared times the variance of X, but you don't do anything with the plus B. Why? Because variance is to the spread of the data and coding, which changes the data with addition and subtraction, doesn't change the spread of the data. So it doesn't change the variance. But multiplying does, whereas for mean of the data, this is to do with the mean, adding and, subtra and, and adding, subtracting, multiplication, division, both affect the, um, the mean of the data. So that's why they both are used here. So it's A times expected value of X plus B, and here it's A squared times the variance of X without any addition of the B to it, okay? So we're going to use that to answer this question. Now, first of all, we know E to the E of Y, the expected value of y would be the same as the expected value of 30 over x because y is equal to 30 over x so this is the same as saying the expected value of you could say 30 times 1 over x because that's what 30 over x is actually is so if we look at this okay pattern here this will be basically 30 times the expected value of 1 over x that's what it would be so that's equal to 30 times what well, we have the expected value of 1 over x, which is 2 fifths. 5 and, six can, five and uh, 30 cancel out, leave you with 6. So you have 6 times 2, which is 12. So we can say the expected value of y, therefore, is equal to 12. Okay. And similarly with the second, this is part 1. Part 2, the variance of y. We use this, the similar kind of idea. The variance of y is basically the variance of... 30 times 1 over x following that same logic but now we're going to use this we know the variance of x is 29 over 600 so we can say that this is going to be um, 30 squared times the variance of 1 over x okay which is going to be 900 times and the variance of 1 over x as we saw was 29 over 600 times 29 over 600 to the cancel out six and and uh, nine three goes into that three times sorry that's three times three over two so you have 29 times three so 30 times three would be what 90 that's going to be 87 87 over two just make sure of that you have 900 um, times 29 over 600 that gives you 87 over two good so that's the variance of y is 87 over 2. Okay, so there's your answer to part 1 and to part 2 of part C of question number 4. Okay, so it's just using this these bits of information that we should know from discrete random variables about the transformations of them. So here we know e what, the expected value of 1 over x and the variance of 1 over x, so we can deal with any transformations of them this is 30 times 1 over x, so we can deal with those. All right, so now for part D, it says find the probability um, that x is less than 3 given that y is less than 20. Given that y is less than 20. So here we're dealing with y again as well. So if you remember, y is equal to 30 over x, just to... Okay, so we want to find the probability that x is less than 3 given that y is less than 20. Now, x is less than 3, okay, would be these two. Okay, but here, when you have this given thing, remember, if you have the probability of A given B, that means we're making B our sample space. So our sample space is Y is less than 20. Okay, so if Y is less than 20 is our sample space, if we convert it in, ter in terms of X, we can say 30 over X is less than 20 is our sample space. So what does that give us for X? You have 30 divided by 20 is less than X. So that's 1.5. So x is greater than 1.5. So our sample space is values of x which are less greater than 1.5. So our sample space basically is all of this. That's going to be our denominator because we know that the probability of a given b is the probability of the intersection of a and b over the probability of b. So in this case, our b is y is less than 20, which is the same as x is greater than 1.5. So this is basically saying 
the probability that x is less than 3 given y is less than 20 is the same as saying probability that x is less than 3 given that x is greater than 1.5. That's the same thing, okay, because that leads us to this. All right, so the probability that x is less than 3, so that's going to be the probability that x is less than 3 intersection with x is um, greater than 1.5 over the probability that x is greater than 1.5. Okay, so what is the probability that x is greater, less than 3 intersection with x is greater than 1.5? So it has to be less than 3 and also greater than 1.5. Okay, so what's less than 3 and greater than 1.5? Well, it's only this. If we think about that, it's only this section over here. That's the only part which is less than 3 and also greater than 1.5. Remember, it has to be discrete, so that's why greater than 1.5 only includes equals 2. So it's going to be basically the probability that x is equal to 2, okay, which is 1 over 5, divided by the probability that x is greater than 1.5. So it's going to be the probability that x equals 2 plus the probability that x equals 3 plus the probability that x equals 4. Those are all greater than 1.5. So that will give us our answer. What's the probability that x equals 2? It's going to be 1 fifth. Divided by the probability of them added together. So it's 1 fifth plus 3 tenths plus 2 fifths. So you end up with 1 over 5 divided by, that's going to be 2 tenths plus 3 tenths plus 4 tenths. So let me just write out 2 tenths plus 3 tenths plus four tenths okay so that gives us what that gives us one over five divided by that's five plus four nine over ten which is the same as one over five times ten over nine so you end up with a cancelling so you're left with two over nine so the probability of the original question which was x is less than three given that y is greater than Oh, y is less than 20, given that y is less than 20, that was the original question, is equal to 2 over 9. So there's the answer for the last part of the question. And there we have, you know, uh, this question answered. It's a bit strange here, this part here, but it's not something that's, you know, too difficult. I have to just relate everything in terms of x by using what they gave us. That's all. And this conditional probability again, come up a lot in these type of questions lately so you have to understand that this is basically where you make what's after the slash sign is given that's our sample space so our sample space is what's over here y is less than 20 means in this case x is greater than 1.5 so it's going to be all of this that's our sample space and you know when you have given so it's like this and this together you have to find the intersection between them and the intersection between them is basically the only thing where x is less than 3 and greater than 1.5, it's just that one, when x is equal to 2. And there we have our answer for the question. And other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist. It will appear in a link at the top of the page here at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of discrete random variables in general from S1, you can find lots of examples of them in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And the link here will tell you, take you to a video which tells you how to use my channel effectively and look, find all my index kind of uh, links uh, pdf links with all the different things that i am going through thank you for watching and see you soon